So Veneta Clax um, has really uh, transformed um, both the treatment of frontline as well as relapse refractory CLL with now approvals in both settings based off of the CLL-14 um, and Murano uh, trial. And one of the unique aspects and certainly something that is really great for patients is that venetoclax-based regimens are able to be administered as fixed duration or time-limited therapies. So in the frontline setting, venetoclax administered with obinutuzumab, uh, for 12 months, a uh, total duration of therapy, and then patients are able to discontinue therapy per the label. And then in the relapse refractory setting, based off of the Murano trial administered with uh, rituximab for 24 months. So many patients, more and more patients, as venetoclax is increasingly used in clinical practice, um, will discontinue a venetoclax-based regimen. And while in the treat to progression uh, traditional model, patients would discontinue therapy at progressive disease or unacceptable toxicity, um, some patients are discontinuing venetoclax for completion of the planned therapy treatment. And so as more and more patients are, are faced needing another therapy after venetoclax, and some of these patients have already been exposed to therapies uh, including um, PI3 kinase inhibitors or BTK inhibitors. Um, one of the questions that's facing patients and clinicians is, can venetoclax be used again in a later line of therapy, particularly if the patients had a good response um, to the first uh, venetoclax uh, regimen, regimen and maybe even had um, a treatment-free uh, remission um, that, that was quite long. So at the ASH meeting in 2020, um, there were two separate abstracts um, that started to look at this question, which in the past had only had very limited data. We still have only data on a small number of patients, um, but the evidence is growing and really is, is hypothesis generating um, for retreatment as, as a strategy. So one of the abstracts looked at five-year follow-up uh, from the Murano data, this was the abstract by uh, Rosemary Harrop, and they uh, had a, a population of 32 patients who had progressive disease following um, the venetoclax and rituximab regimen um, on the Murano trial. And um, of these, they had uh, patients who are retreated with a venetoclax-based regimen. Um, and there were 21 patients, um, and there's a retreatment arm of the sub-study, and then 11 uh, additional patients outside of that Murano sub-study. And of these patients, 18 of them had available response assessments, and 13 had a response to retreatment for an overall response rate of 72%. Um, and so this uh, was, uh, you know, kind of a, a first look um, at, at retreatment as a strategy. And it does look with that high overall response rate that for certain patients, this might be a really great um, strategy and actually allow them to continue, you know, within the same, same class of med medication. So concurrently at the ASH meeting, um, I also presented data um, from a multi-center collaborative effort, a retrospective study um, from 13 uh, centers as well as uh, the core CLL database. And we presented uh, data on 25 patients um, who had been treated with venetoclax uh, in, in uh, an earlier line of therapy and then retreated in a later line of therapy. And so uh, most of these patients were relapsed refractory um, CLL. There were um, uh, just over 10% of patients included who had received frontline venetoclax. And what's unique about uh, our population uh, compared to the, the Murano uh, retreatment data is that this was a very heavily pretreated population and actually 60% of patients had been treated with a BTK inhibitor. Um, so these were patients who had already seen BCL2 and BTK inhibitors for the most part. The reason for the initial venetoclax uh, regimen discontinuation uh, you know, varied. Um, there were some patients who discontinued for toxicity in addition to completion of planned therapy. Some um, uh, One patient discontinued for a uh, stem cell transplant. 
And the majority of patients did not receive another line of therapy between the venetoclax regimen. You know, we actually had the same number of evaluable patients as the um, Murano abstract I just discussed, um, 18 evaluable patients. And we actually found the same overall response rate. So 13 of the 18 patients, so just over 70% uh, for the, the second venetoclax regimen. So this data is really a hypothesis generating. The strategy certainly needs to be validated prospectively. Um, and there are clinical trials that have uh, built-in arms to do so. Um, and then another unique aspect um, and something that patients and providers care about a lot and will be important moving forward is the safety data on this approach. Um, and we were able to collect some preliminary safety data in our retrospective multi-center study. Overall, with retreatment, um, the incidence of tumor lysis was, was quite low, um, just uh, 4% of patients. Um, so it does appear, at least preliminarily, to be a safe strategy um, and with the high overall response rate an effective strategy. Moving forward, certainly um, prospective validation of the retreatment strategy is needed. Um, as well as larger retrospective studies um, with more patients uh, really looking at this question. Um, but I think that there's promising strategy here clinically for a select subgroup of patients, those who complete um, plan therapy and discontinue the first venetoclax regimen for that, or perhaps those who discontinue for a minor toxicity um, that can be rechallenged and, and managed again.